Hey, I'm Jonathan Schwartz. I first fell in love with woodworking in middle school and been working with wood ever since. I want to go over the table saw today. This is the tabletop right here. Here's the blade. Right behind the blade here is called the splitter. These paws right here are anti-kickers, they're just called kickers. This here is the fence, it slides on this track and you set your measurement off of here. So there's your measurement. Here's a push stick for pushing narrow boards through. Right in the front here is a blade height adjustment with a protractor below it. And on this side right here is a bevel adjustment. So that tilts the blade back and forth. Okay, so those are all of the parts of the table saw. The power switch is right here. Very well designed so when you turn it on, you can actually design so you can turn it off if you need, so you don't have to release the workpiece. Here's a list before I get started. First thing is make sure you have eye protection and ear protection. So you want to make sure you have ear and eye protection. You want to make sure you have good fitting clothes, nothing loose, no lanyards, nothing to get caught up, and closed toed shoes. You want to make sure this whole area is clean and there's nothing in your workspace that could accidentally hit that table saw. And you want to make sure there's nobody standing in your kickback window. If your kickback window is back here, make sure that area stays clear and nobody crowds you at that saw. Okay? Then, so that's me personally, and I want to make sure I have my right mental state before I use a table saw. I want to make sure my head's clear. I'm really focused on what I'm doing. I won't let anything distract me at all. Okay. Then I want to check the saw out. So let me bring the blade adjustment up high. And before my hands ever get near that blade, I turn it off and I turn the breaker off as well. So I have a double lock out there. I want to put a ruler up against that blade and make sure it's parallel to the miter slot. And it is. And then I also want to make sure my fence is parallel to that miter slot. And it is. Okay, so now that I know my blade's parallel to the miter slot and the fence, I want to check perpendicular with a square. And it is perpendicular. And I want to make sure that all my guards are in place, my kickers are in place and everything's ready to go. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to check my material. So here's my material. This is manufactured MDF, but it's clean in nails. There are no knot knots. There's no warping in it. It has a flat surface to sit down on the table saw. And then before I cut, I want to set that blade height to come about a quarter inch above the wood. <laughs> and I want to just have it barely come through the wood. Okay, now I'm ready to cut. So I'll turn the breaker back on, the main power switch back on, and then I could set my width two different ways. I could set it at 12 inches on the fence here, or I could use a tape. And I just, if I'm gonna use a tape, I want to check between this side of the tooth and the fence. 12 inches as well. Okay, so I have my hearing and eye protection. All my guards are in place. I make sure my area is clean. I turn it on. My left hand is used to hold the blade this way, and my right hand is the forward. Never give me that blade. I like to stay out of line of the blade. I like to use the all the way past the blade. There are two issues that could possibly happen, or two primary issues where you could run into trouble on a table saw. Number one is getting cut. So the way you prevent getting cut is you make sure there's as little blade exposed as possible. It's covered with a guard. And most importantly, your fingers never go in line with that blade. Number two is a kickback. What happens with the kickback 
is that blade spinning around really fast and it's spinning towards you, you bind the board, it catches the back of that blade and it throws it back up at over, probably over 100 miles an hour if you were to figure it out. It can only throw up a piece of wood if it's bound. So your off cut will never be a kickback. Your kickback will always happen between the blade and a binding mechanism like the fence. So if I'm cutting this way, I'm just going to cut a smaller piece off this time. I'm going to leave the blade up so you can see a little bit better. It's starting to get a little narrow. I have to control the board between the blade and the fence. I have to go all the way past. My hand's going to get too close to that blade, so I'm going to use a push stick. With hardwoods, the grain runs this way. When I cut with the grain this way, that's called a rip. And when I cross cut the grain, it's called a cross cut. So if I want to use the table saw for cross cutting, I could actually use what's called a miter gauge. The miter gauge is square. I check it with the square to make sure that it's square to the miter slot. Miter gauge fits right in the miter slot. And then I could cut this way right across. Very important, do not use the fence and the miter gauge together because you'll create a bind between the fence and the miter gauge. So here, again, I want that blade just a quarter inch above my material. I'm just going to cut off a little bit. My guard's in place. I really need to control this board because this is where the bind is going to happen. My off cut won't create a kickback. So it's on. Really good hold of the board. All the way through top of the blade. And again, this is a miter gauge versus a fence. Cutting with the grain is a rip. Across the grain is a cross cut. Two primary ways to get hurt with this tool. One is getting cut. The way you prevent that, fingers are never close to that blade or in line with that blade. Number two is getting hit with a kickback. The way you prevent a kickback is you never create binding situations. So never use the miter gauge and the fence together. It's a fantastic tool, really safe if used properly. It's kind of the workhorse of any shop. Um, you could really kind of make a whole set of cabinets using only a table saw and a router. Um, most useful tool, most versatile tool, and really safe if used correctly.